Dan Wilson Guardian, 9 millimeter, 25 yards. Let's see if it'll ring the silhouette. I'm sure it will. About the 12 inch. Yep, how about a 10? How about an 8? I think I can get the center of that silhouette. My gosh, I can. Can I get it back? How about that? I doubt if I get the pelvis, I'll go to the other 10. Try the pelvis. My gosh, it works. Like that Guardian. In 1904, John Browning designed the 45 automatic Colt pistol cartridge, also known today as the 45 ACP. He designed that for the prototype Colt pistol that eventually was adopted by the Army um, back uh, more than a century ago, and it became the gun that we affectionately know as the 1911. There were some early gunsmiths who tried to adopt the 45 caliber 1911 idea to a 9mm cartridge. And as you can see, there's a quite a bit of difference between the 45 and the 9 in length as well as width. And uh, from reports that I've read, the early attempts at, at adopting the 1911 to the 9mm weren't all that successful. They had reliability problems. So in 2006 or 2005 or 2007, depending on which source you go to, Springfield decided that they would try to re-engineer the 1911 and they said they did a ground up redesign to make the 1911 platform ideal for the shorter 40 caliber and 9 millimeter cartridge design. They called that their enhanced micro pistol. Well, micro may be a, a marketing term, but, but let's see really uh, if it is micro. Now, they also claim that there were 17 parts that were unique to the uh, EMP, which is their enhanced micro pistol. And those 17 uh, parts um, make it questionable to me whether or not this is really a 1911 design. When the gun first came out, it came out in a 3 inch version. In 2016, they came out with a 4 inch version. They called it the EMP4. 2017, they came out with a concealed carry contour, which is what you're looking at here, and uh, that is the EMP4CCC. So, I have two questions about the EMP. Number one, is it in fact a 1911, or can it be considered a 1911? And there may be some differing opinions on that, I'll offer mine. And question number two, how does it stack up against something that is a more traditional commander size 1911. Of course you know that rider's range is going to answer those questions. Now one of the most obvious differences is in the slide length, the traditional, and here you have a Dan Wesson Guardian, the traditional uh, commander is a four and a quarter inch barrel, the EMP4 is a four inch barrel. So that's uh, one of the 17 unique um, parts in the uh, EMP, I presume. Uh, another one is the frame, and you'll notice on the EMP that it may be hard to tell in the video, we'll put a couple of stills up there to show, that the grip frame is just a little narrower front to back. That might be a little better view here. Just a little bit narrower front to back than a traditional 1911. And in fact, the, uh, they say that they, uh, Springfield says that they cut an eighth of an inch out of the middle of the uh, EMP frame and uh, narrowed it down to better accommodate the uh, 9mm 40 caliber cartridge. The frame itself, when you put calipers on it, measures about an eighth of an inch difference. Uh, just over, uh, it's actually 2.025. Uh, front to back on the Dan Wesson, 1.877 front to back on the EMP, which also means that there's another big difference here, and this is one of my big issues about whether or not this is really a 1911, and that is that because the grip is smaller, it takes a smaller magazine, and again, uh, designed specifically for the 9mm 40 caliber cartridge, and it fits nicely in the EMP, but doesn't fit so nicely in a more traditional 1911. Now that the, one of the problems with the feeding the 1911 was of course the the cartridge like some manufacturers uh, shortened their uh, magazine internally but not externally so it would continue to fit in a 1911 frame. Some did it with by putting a spacer in the rear of the magazine as this Dan Wesson magazine is. Uh, this STI magazine they put a dimple in the front 
which uh, kept the cartridges more uh, properly aligned, therefore shrinking the inside of the of the uh, uh, magazine. This particular Wilson Combat magazine has a plastic insert in the back, again doing the same thing as the the metal one does in this uh, Dan Wesson magazine. And again, a lot of 9mm 1911s are pretty finicky about magazine size. This Guardian is not one of them though. I can run just about any magazine through this without uh, any significant issues. But the 1911 magazine, of course, will not fit in the EMP. And to me, that's one of the big things that makes the EMP a 1911 almost, but not a true 1911. Now, this, the second strike, of course, is the, the grip size. Uh, and again, the second strike, in just my opinion, and you want to call this a full 1911, that's fine. But in my opinion, just having that grip shortened front to back does make a big difference. It, it feels different in the hand. Now, the, the Dan Wesson, even with... Uh, very slim grips on it. Uh, that front to back difference of an eighth of an inch does make a difference in the feel of the gun. So that, to me that's the the second strike that doesn't make it a, uh, a real 1911. It's interesting though when they uh, when they shortened the, the grip frame uh, they didn't actually they put a slightly longer trigger in this gun. You'll see the skeletonized trigger on the EMP looks a little longer than the uh, the non-skeletonized trigger on the Dan Wesson and that's why the reach from the back of the frame to the trigger is virtually identical between the two guns. The uh, reach to the trigger from the back of the, uh, the grip frame on the Dan West is 2.741 and the uh, EMP4 2.742. So again, virtually identical there. Now you'd think that if they're going to make this an enhanced micro pistol, that they would have also put a, uh, a slightly shorter trigger in there to make the reach to the trigger a little bit more comfortable for smaller hands. Um, that wasn't the case, so they made it more comfortable for smaller hands to wrap around the grip, but not to be able to reach the trigger. Now, how enhanced is the micro pistol? Uh, you'd think also, since there's 17 proprietary parts, since it's, it's got a smaller grip frame, a, a smaller magazine, a shorter barrel, you'd think that it would in fact enhance the gun weight-wise. Dan Wesson, uh, being a traditional aluminum frame commander class gun, with a magazine full of 10 rounds of 124 grain ammunition, one extra round for the, uh, the chamber, comes in at 34.5 ounces, yet the EMP, the enhanced micro pistol, with the same 10 rounds in a uh, proprietary magazine and one for the chamber, the same 124 grain ammunition comes out at 34.6 ounces, just one tenth of an ounce more actually than the four and a quarter inch Commander. So let's look at some other similarities and differences. Now to start with, both of these would be what's called today the Series 70 style gun. There's, by the way, these have been safety inspected, they are unloaded. There is nothing inside the uh, the back of the slide to indicate that there's any kind of a uh, firing pin safety in either of these. So there's no Series 80 system, there's no Swartz firing pin system, so they'd be called 70 series guns. So how about, uh, let's see, we'll talk about sights. The sights on the Dan Wesson are Novak style, tritium, three dot, white dot front, two white dots in the rear, and um, decent sight picture, the fact that they are uh, night sights, Trigicon night sights uh, is a nice touch on that. You also pay for it in the, in the uh, retail price. The EMP has a green fiber optic front and traditional two dot rear and sights on both these guns by the way are windage adjustable, uh, drift adjustable for windage, uh, not uh, adjustable for height at all. In fact uh, you can notice on this gun I did buy it used. There are some marks back here on the the sight and the slide on both sides where um, whoever had it before me did try to drift the sight and I've even had to, you'll see in the in the um, um, accuracy shooting on these I did have to move them a little to the right and still need to move them just a little bit more. Uh, slide markings too, the, uh, the slide on the Guardian is uh, relatively plain, nothing at all on the right side. On the left side it just says Guardian, uh, nice and small so it doesn't really jump out at you and I have a tendency to call these the billboard signs. Uh, of course there's a billboard for the EMP4 and 9mm on the left side of the EMP with the EMP4 back here and Springfield Armory up here. So it, it does scream at you a little bit more as to what it is. Uh, neither of these guns has any forward cocking serrations. Um, another couple of differences though are the Dan Wesson has a match bushing type barrel 
which means it doesn't have a full length guide rod and a very nicely flush cut and uh, crowned barrel. Really nice touch. Whereas the Springfield does have a full length guide rod which makes takes down a little take down a little different. It does have a bull barrel as opposed to a bushing barrel. And it's not flush cut, it's not even crowned, but then again um, there is a significant price difference and uh, I'm sure that's one of the trade-offs that Springfield had to make. So when you grip the gun you'll notice a, different in, a difference in the texture on the front strap. The Dan Wesson has uh, 25 lines per inch checkering. The Springfield EMP has a, a texturing that's a dimpling and actually it's similar to uh, the dimpling you'll find on a, on a golf ball. And on the Springfield that carries through to the G10 style grips and also carries through to the mainspring housing which is bobbed which is what made it their concealed carry contour. Dan Wesson on the other hand uh, has the uh, really nice wood grips on it. They're, they're nicely textured. Uh, I prefer when I do carry this to put a pair of stoner grips on it which to me give it a little more uh, uh, just a little more grip ability than the uh, the wooden grips. Wooden grips are a nice touch however they do look nice and when you carry it back to the mainspring housing again this one's bobbed but it's smooth there's uh, no striations no dimpling no no um, checkering nothing on the back uh, I've shot this gun a lot I've carried it quite a bit and uh, here's the trade-off in that uh, I haven't really noticed any difference in uh, in how it grips or how it shoots but there's nothing back here to uh, wear my shirts uh, when it's carried under a shirt or a jacket was carried under a jacket one other difference on these, you'll notice that the Dan Wesson has a single-sided safety, uh, nice platform on it uh, for uh, shooting with a, a high thumb grip on it. It works really nice. It's a good positive safety. EMP has a similar contour and it's just as positive. However, it's an ambidextrous safety. And if you're left-handed, that's a good point. If you're right-handed, it may or may not be a good point. Some ambies will get in the way when I'm shooting with a high grip. This one does not, and uh, does seem to uh, work out fairly well. Dan Wesson comes in a uh, black duty finish. The EMP4 comes in four different finishes. These don't have magwells as such. Um, however, the opening uh, for the magazine is cut just a little bit uh, greater angle on the EMP. Does it make any difference in practicality? Eh, eh, that's that's going to be subjective. Triggers are also a little different. Uh, I mentioned that the Dan Wesson is a solid trigger and you'll notice that there is a, an over or hole for an over travel stop adjustment in this and this gun breaks consistently uh, or a, a five shot average it breaks at three pounds 15 ounces it's crisp it's clean and there's virtually no over travel thanks to that over travel stop and very short reset on this gun very short and just uh, again a little bit of take up it's very very nice trigger on that on the Dan Wesson EMP on the other hand does have a skeletonized trigger there is no over travel adjustment on this trigger and again, it is a little bit longer than the um, the Dan Wesson. Just a little bit of take up again, very nice. And it's got just a little bit of creep in it. Uh, hardly noticeable in the Dan Wesson. There, it is noticeable more in the Springfield. You got to go a little bit farther to get your reset. And there is just a little bit of over travel on this because there is no over travel stop. Uh, this one uh, does a five pound or five pull average of four pounds five ounces so it's heavier not quite as nice as the trigger on the Dan Wesson and that may account for some of the accuracy issues that that uh, we had speaking of which when I put these guns uh, to the test using 124 grain ammunition uh, at 15 yards the uh, both except for a couple of flyers they uh, they both shot three inch groups. You can see the Dan Wesson is just a tiny hair to the right except for those couple of flyers at the bottom of the target. The uh, Springfield EMP4 was shooting a little high left. I can't do anything about the high without changing the sights. Um, and except for the uh, the couple of flyers I had on that, again the group's going to be relatively nice. One comment about the sight though, uh, this Dan Wesson is one of the few guns that I've had to send back to the factory. 
Uh, I bought this uh, about the same time a friend of mine bought an identical gun, and both of these were shooting about five inches high at 50 feet. And uh, we, the heavier ammunition brought it down a little bit, but uh, still, they obviously put the wrong size front sight on it. So I sent mine back to Dan Wesson, got a pretty quick turnaround on it. I sent a target in with it, uh, with all the specs, the distance, the whole bit. And uh, they did put on uh, on my gun a little taller front sight, and uh, obviously it was the right height, brought it down to the right place. So they, I think they're both capable, certainly at 50 feet or 15 yards, 45 feet of, of shooting nicely. Um, but I'm not as happy with the EMP when I start getting out to distance. Now, one thing is the fiber optic front sight. It makes it a little harder to get really precise alignment. Now, it's great for quick shooting, but I haven't found any significant advantage over uh, just a, a conventional dot front sight. Um, some may, uh, may differ on that, and that's fine. Again, different eyes, uh, different shooting techniques. But to me, it, it doesn't lend itself to as precise sight alignment at 50 yards as does the the, the uh, Dan Wesson. I think a couple other problems that uh, happen to hurt the 50 yard shooting with the EMP, uh, the fact it doesn't have a match barrel whereas the Dan Wesson does um, allegedly have a match 9 millimeter barrel. Uh, will that make a difference? I don't know. Uh, bushing versus bull barrel, does that make a difference? And some people's book it might, although I've got some bull barrel guns that shoot really, really nice at 50 yards. I think one of the big inhibitors on the on the EMP was that trigger. A couple other things before we get into uh, uh, the cost on these is the, the fit on these guns. The, the couple of things I look for in fit is uh, how the frame and slide fits on the back. I run my fingers over it. If I can, if I can feel the difference, then it's not fit quite as precisely, and I can I can feel it in here. I mean, it's still nicely fit. It doesn't, you don't have much movement between the slide and the frame. I'm okay with that, but I can feel that it's not quite as well fitted uh, on the back here as I would like. You can also see where the uh, extractor does stick up from the frame a little bit, so or from the slide rather. So again, that wasn't fitted quite as nicely as I would like. On the Dan Wesson, on the other hand, the frame to slide fit is very nicely done and there's only the slightest difference uh, between the extractor and the slide. A really nice job of fitting this gun. And I'm sure that's reflected in the price. Manufacturer suggested retail for the 9mm is $1,558. Uh, normal retail price on these are going to be about uh, in the $1,200 range, generally a little bit more. I haven't found any on the used market lately, so I don't know what uh, what the used price would go for. I'm guessing somewhere probably in the uh, $1,100 range. The EMP, on the other hand, has an MSRP of $1,220. Doesn't matter what finish it is, I, if I remember the website correctly, uh, all of the finishes are going to be about the same price. Uh, you can find these retail for uh, around 900 maybe a little bit more, and interestingly, there's a few on the used market, and uh, they're also showing up on the auction sites for right around $900. So there's about a $300 price advantage for the EMP over the, the uh, Dan Wesson Guardian. So when you compare them, uh, you look at the weight of the gun, that's pretty much a draw, a tenth of an ounce difference between the two guns. No real advantage for the enhanced micro pistol there. The sights, uh, that's going to be subjective. For me, uh, I'm, I'm not a, a fan of three-dot sights, uh, and the um, the EMP still has a three-dot type configuration, that center dot being green uh, as the fiber optic. Um, that's going to be, uh, your mileage may vary on that, your preference is going to be different, but I'm going to give a slight edge to the, the sights on the Dan Wesson, considering it has the night sights on it. Trigger definitely uh, goes to the advantage to the Dan Wesson. Uh, lighter crisper, cleaner trigger with no over travel. It's still a nice trigger on the EMP, but not as nice as that Dan Wesson. A big plus for me on selecting the Dan Wesson is the fact that it'll take conventional 1911 magazines. And to me, if it doesn't fit a 1911 magazine, it's not a 1911. I don't care what it looks like or feels like. The feel of the gun, the, the fact that it has that, uh, that conventional 1911 size grip even with the uh, the slim grip panels on it which makes it nice to carry and hold. I like the feeling of the Guardian. Uh, I'm sure I could get used to the feel of the EMP. It would take some work. Accuracy, and again for me, uh, that's just my two guns. Any other uh, uh, EMPs, any other Guardians may shoot totally different than these, although my, my buddy's 9mm Guardian shoots just the same as this one does. I don't have any other EMPs to compare it with, but for me the accuracy uh, at distance is much better with the uh, Dan Wesson Guardian than it is for the EMP. 
On the other hand, $300 price savings for that EMP, it's a really nice gun, and we live in a great world where there are many, many different guns to fit many, many different people. So there's going to be some people that love their EMPs, and great. If it works for you, it's a great gun. So to me, there's a definite winner. The Dan Wesson Guardian is the hands-down winner in this comparison. Doesn't mean the EMP4 Concealed Carry Contour is not a great gun. It's a very nice gun, and again, I could get used to it, and it's a defensive pistol. I'd be happy with that one. So that concludes part 12 of the great affordable 1911 series. We're uh, just over halfway through. Uh, next, uh, next up, we're going to have um, a, a Ruger versus Kimber. Um, not the first time that uh, you've seen this Ruger. It showed up in a, a comparison uh, early on before we started this series uh, with a, uh, a Ruger 45. Uh, they're both commemoratives. Uh, One's a Naval Special Warfare, the other a Navy SEAL Foundation. So we're putting the uh, Ruger 9mm Navy Special Warfare gun up against a Kimber Pro Carry 2 in Part 13. If you like these videos, please give us a thumbs up, and we always appreciate uh, if you subscribe. And um, hit that notification bell to be notified that when the next Riders Range video is coming out. For any other questions about what's uh, coming up, what's in store, we put our full uh, long-term playlist in the 1911 series on our website at ridersrange.com and feel free to uh, make any comments. Uh, we always appreciate comments whether it's on uh, this series, this particular video, or anything else you'd like to see and if you don't want to have a public comment drop us a line at info at ridersrange.com. Once again I want to thank you for visiting Riders Range. Dan Wesson Guardian 9mm, 12 yards on the plate. Ran good on 15. Let's see how it works on the 15 yard bullseye. Let's see how it works here. Oh, missed the last one. No complaints.